Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be talking about the games I enjoyed the most this year, basically my top 10 2019 games. This is all my opinion on games released on 2019. This can include remakes, remasters or early access games that landed on other platforms before PC but arrived to this platform this year. I wasn't able to play all the games, that's impossible, so I tend to stick to things that I'm familiar with most often. Keep all that in mind when watching this video, your favorite games may not be in this list. So for number 10 I choose World War Seat. This is a third person shooter where you go through different levels, completing simple objectives while trying to survive against hordes of zombies. It can be played with three other players, bots, or a combination of both. This will feel very Left 4 Dead. This will be more clear after seeing the special enemies. At the same time, it includes more zombies on screen and a different weapon loadout system, with some deployable ones like turrets and barbed wire in certain parts of the levels. What I liked the most about it was the variation of the campaigns. It takes place in different cities around the world with different characters that change depending on the location. While unfortunately not a super long game, it seems to be aimed to replay those sections on higher difficulties. I always enjoy fighting against lots of enemies on screen, so this was definitely a game made for me. I wish more of my friends own it, it's significantly better when there's real people playing with you. It also runs pretty well considering the amount of enemies, you can choose between Vulcan and DX11. In this case the game seems to run much better on AMD hardware, especially when using Vulcan. On Nvidia on the other hand I recommend DX11 if you have a GTX 1000 series card or older. Number 9 Risk of Rain 2. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this game when I first found out about its existence. I remember the first one being 2D and that I played it a long time ago when I got it on sale. I liked it but I wasn't super stoked about it, so going for 3D was one of the first surprises. It's amazing how they translated to it so well. While it's still an early access, it has a good amount of content and felt polished. You start with your character's basic movements and start looting random things in order to be more powerful. After you get enough things, quote unquote, you activate the portal to get to the next phase, which will mean a boss fight, and after you beat that boss, you jump into the next level with things that you looted and there will be more powerful things as you advance, and each time you start the game the maps and locations of items change. There's also an interesting mechanic with time, the longer you take, the harder the game will be, so as much as you want to loot everything to be powerful, it's convenient to be quick as well. After the third level, the difficulty, at least in my opinion, was insane. Tons of enemies at once, bosses with a lot of health and weird items to pick up. I found it enjoyable even with strangers online, that was way better than going on your own. The game also runs decently, the frame rate says goodbye when you're on a pretty high difficulty fighting tons of enemies. So keep that in mind when tweaking settings in the first level. Number 8, Ace Combat 7. This is a game where you are a jet fighter pilot. While it's one of the most well-known names in that genre, I never played any of those games. So when people wanted me to test this game, I wasn't sure on what to do, but it was very easy to get into, even without the easy control options. It might seem very straightforward while looking at the gameplay, but I don't think it is that simple. Sometimes I got attacked from places I didn't expect on both ground and air, so it felt amazing to destroy the enemies while doing cool maneuvers in the air. Apart from the aircraft that you can choose, there's a good amount of upgrades and weapons to select from, some more suited to air-to-air -air combat, some others for ground targets. There's always an option for each situation, but being a noob made it difficult for me to choose at some points since I didn't know what I was fighting against. What annoyed me sometimes was that I wasn't paying attention to the cinematics and briefings and I ended up not knowing what to do in some of the missions, since there was no other clear way for me to see the current objective. Just a minor thing, but I think that many people won't pay attention. It also runs pretty well, I can get 60 frames per second on a 1050Ti on 1080p using the highest settings in most of the levels, but it seems to favor Nvidia cards by a noticeable margin though. Number 7, Remnant from the Ashes. This is a game I didn't know existed or was coming out, it's from the devs that made Darksiders 3 and the Darksiders 2 Remaster. It was a top seller on Steam with good reviews, calling it quote unquote Dark Souls with guns, so I jumped into it right away. While it's not exactly that, it does draw elements from Souls-like games and it has guns. 
There are checkpoints to rest at, it's easy to die, rolling to avoid attacks, after death or resting most of the enemies respawn, there are bosses with long health bars, multiple stats that affect how you inflict damage to enemies and other similarities, but I still felt it different enough in my opinion. It's not the hardest game I played, but it asks more from the player than most shooting games. The maps' layouts and enemy locations are never the exact same when you start a new game, they are procedurally generated. This is great if you plan on doing multiple playthroughs or getting to co-op with strangers and friends. It won't be entirely familiar to you when you jump back, which made me play the game longer. After you get comfortable with your gear, it's a very enjoyable experience, just make sure to be patient with some of the initial boss fights. The game runs decently, but considering the looks of it, I'm a little disappointed, especially when aiming for 60 frames per second. Lowering shadows, effects and the post-processing options helped, but some sections run bad without much going on. Number 6, Metro Exodus. I was really looking forward to it for a while, I managed to get it on Steam before they jumped to the Epic Store. This feels like an expected evolution of the previous games. The levels are now mostly open locations where you can explore to get better gear and do side missions while also completing the main ones if you want to get to the next location. So I spent a long time on each of the places trying to complete as much side things as possible. When fighting a lot of enemies I went for stealth most of the time but you can choose to go guns blazing if you want as well. Although it's probably going to drain all your ammo and supplies. The game starts slow and more linear like the first games, but then it opens up and you're free to decide what to do, basically. I love how the main character interacts with menus and environments too. When getting something upgraded, crafted or just looking at the maps for objectives, the character actually opens the backpack, takes out the map. The game doesn't stop for you to look at the menu, it was a very immersive. So I enjoyed the gameplay, the interesting story, and while the graphics were great, I lowered them to get close to 60 frames per second, especially in the desert and forest locations. It still held up amazingly on medium settings, but it requires a ton of graphics card to handle. Number 5, Mortal Kombat 11. I'm not a huge fighting game player, I'm mostly into shooters, as you can tell from watching this video, but I enjoyed these titles from time to time. I'm stoked with this one, there's a lot of variation in the characters, you can basically make your own style. It's not hard to get into it at first, you can push all the buttons and things happen. Although it's not easy to master at all, the game expects you to get multiple combos figured out in order to be good at the game, which makes sense, without that it really makes the characters feel heavy. It was a very interesting once you get the hang of it, but I expect most people to give up if looking to play with other people. I also like the characters and story, it's amazing how good the motion capture and facial expressions look, considering it's a fighting game. All that really hooked me from start to finish, which wasn't the case with the story of Mortal Kombat X. The game runs decently, considering how it looks, but don't expect similar numbers to the previous game, this one goes much harder on the GPU than ever before. Number 4, Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, it was released on PC this year, so it made it to the list. It's the first three Spyro games from the PS1, completely remastered from the ground up. Everything seems to be the same except in the graphics, which I'm really thankful for. I played the third one when I was 5 years old on the PS1, but I never finished any of them. I finished all three in a couple weeks on this version and I had a blast. Not sure if it's only nostalgia, but these games really hold up. There's not a lot like it in modern gaming. You have to collect a lot of currency to get through certain locations, there's time trials, challenges and some weird chases every now and then. After collecting enough dragon eggs or freeing adult dragons depending on which of the games you are playing, it unlocks a new world that has multiple increasingly difficult levels, which will have more secret areas and require more position to do platforming, and there are some boss fights as well. It looks more like an animated movie with a remaster and they really nailed that look. Despite that, the game runs pretty well and you can lower some of the shadows and post-processing effects if you need more FPS, but the look of the game is still there. Number 3, My Friend Pedro. It's a weird game I saw in a Devolver Digital World premiere a while ago, then forgot it was a thing and then I played it when it came out. It really felt fresh, it's mostly side-scroll 3D, but what made it more interesting was the cool moves that you can do in gameplay, which seems to be what this game wants from the player, since after each level it'll show you your coolest move and convert it into a GIF to share it around. 
You can jump from windows, ropes, walls and others while shooting and flipping in the air in slow motion. It's not a limit in slow-mo, but it's a very important for the gameplay and doing cool stuff. There's a great sense of humor here as well, lots of reference and making fun of some current trends and stigmas going on nowadays, related mostly to gaming. It's not a long game, there are interesting set pieces every once in a while, but I was disappointed with that. They expect you to run through it multiple times trying to get higher and higher scores. I'm just not into that at all. I prefer tons of levels, but I get that this is not a game with a AAA budget. It also runs amazing and it's on Nintendo Switch, so I expect most people to have a good time with it. Number 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, but I started with 4 on the PS2, then 5 and 6 on the PS3. I lost interest after I played 6 and Operation Raccoon City. This made me go back to the previous ones, so I played the remake of 1, then Resident Evil 2 on a PS1 emulator, got Veronica on PS4, and I also played Revelations 1. After playing all that, I liked the franchise even more and wanted less action in the games. Resident Evil 7 didn't feel Resident Evil enough to me, so this game was all that I wanted. The story of the great PS1 game with the Resident Evil 4 camera, better movement, without being entirely an action game and taking place in Raccoon City, and they really nailed it. You can't go around killing everything, you need to conserve ammo for boss fights or to wound enemies. And there's some puzzles in there with the constant fear that Mr. X will show up at any second. You actually need to plan your way through the map when trying to get to a location so it's easier to survive. There's still some time to kill zombies, liquors and bosses. It's just not everything that the game has to offer. The visuals are also great with the Capcom's RE engine and it also performs fantastic. They aim for 60 frames per second even on the consoles. What I didn't like is that while you get some of the different parts of the story if you choose Leon or Claire, I was expecting more differences in puzzles and the story when starting the second playthrough. It felt too similar, at least in my opinion, and I'm really looking forward for Resident Evil 3 Remake. I didn't play the original one yet, but it might soon. And finally, number 1, Control. This is a third person shooter made by Remedy. The people behind Max Payne 1 and 2, Alan Wake and Quantum Break. Personally, the game that I didn't like from them was Quantum Break, so after finding out about this one, I wasn't very excited. Once I played it, my jaw dropped. It feels so fresh, despite having some familiar things. At first you just run around and have a weird pistol with infinite ammo that needs to recharge after a few shots, but as you play, you unlock a lot more interesting abilities such as grabbing objects with some force power to throw at enemies, dashing, a shield, more weapon forms, and even flying. All those powers are managed with a separate energy bar that also recharges, like your pistol. So gameplay end up being a ton of fun. While throwing a table at an enemy to destroy its shield, you shoot another one with a pistol or other weapon form. Then while waiting for the gun to recharge, you end up using your powers, which consumes the energy bar. You're constantly managing those two things while trying to avoid losing health and taking out the enemies. And the enemies get very repetitive looking, but there's a good variation in how they behave. The usual assault rifle enemies, then heavy gunners, flying explosive creepy ones, some invisible. Others like to throw objects too. When there are many of those at once, it really becomes a challenge, especially in the secondary mission boss fights. Those can be insanely tough. The destruction physics in this is impressive. While not 100% destructible environments, you can pick up and throw most of the things that you see. There is a ton of debris flying everywhere on every fight, especially after the second and third encounter, where you and the enemies are way more powerful. The story was mysterious and interesting, but it felt incomplete. Hopefully they keep it going in the DLC. Another thing that I enjoyed is that they tried to explain the world a lot. All of the weird sci-fi stuff that happens is explained in the documents that you find in the world. You can skip those if you want, but having some sort of explanation rather than just saying hey it's just a video game made the world a lot better in my opinion. Graphically it looks great, but the upscaling technique that they use makes the game look blurry. This works wonders if you want to use a low resolution on a lower end PC but sometimes it looked a little too blurry on 1080p. I also tried it with the RTX effects. 
it's a huge performance hit so it was just to see what it added and so far I was mostly impressed with the glass, wood and metal surfaces reflections. Sometimes I thought it was an enemy coming out of nowhere but it was just the main character's reflection. All in all it runs well on lower end PCs considering how it looks by lowering some settings or resolutions due to the upscaling tech. I'm really looking forward for the DLC on this one. So anyway guys, those were the games I enjoyed the most this year, let me know what yours were in the comments below. See you on 2020 and thanks for sticking around!